Illinois faces some big challenges. Today, we're about to hear a truly honest analysis of the problems we face. Equally as important, you'll also hear an in-depth discussion of some practical solutions. This is your radio source for stories, the insight, and the answers you won't hear anywhere else. Not in the media and not coming from Springfield. You're listening to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute. Now, here's your host, AM 560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft, and on this edition of Illinois Rising, I'm pleased to be joined by John Cass, famed Chicago Tribune, page two columnist, when they still had print editions of newspapers. They still do. Oh, they do. Yeah. I did not know that. Uh, John Cass, thanks so much for joining us. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Legislative session down in Springfield ended without a budget, but uh, a lot of bull jive being thrown about, mostly from Mike Madigan, who proposed a $7 billion out-of-balance fairy tale budget. The idea to embarrass Governor Rauner and Republicans who voted against it in November. Right, and then now we're in the stage where we're doing the back and forth between special session and who's to blame and will the schools open on time and should we pass a stopgap budget to just get us through the rest of this calendar year? Typical Illinois. Right. After what was f- now we haven't had a budget in uh, the better part of 16 months, but and that's because won't. Well, you won't, and, and you won't have one till he, at least if, till November. If he, if Madigan is allowed to, to have his way, you won't have a budget till he gets rid of Bruce Rauner and we are all in his th- Thrall. Well, and seriously, I'm not joking. No, I know. I, I, you're, I know you're not joking, and it's no joke. But the, the, the point here is that Governor Rauner said, "I'm not. I, I was elected to stop doing things the way that we've been doing them, which is, for example, not have a true balanced budget for the past 14 years. And that's why we haven't had a budget for the last year and a half, is because Governor Rauner says." I'm not going to sign a budget I know is unconstitutionally unbalanced, but even beyond the Constitution that makes spending commitments that we don't have money to abide. What what kind of sense is that? That's not courage. It's not leadership. It's a lie. It's a scam. Uh, and so you wrote a column recently where you invoked uh, a show that is near and dear to both of our hearts, Game of Thrones, and compared Mike Madigan to the undead. To the White Walker. He is the White Walker. Mm-hmm. Is he not? You, if you take a photograph, I need a, the people on Twitter did this. They took pictures, photos of Mike Madigan and photos of the White Walker, the king of the undead in Game of Thrones. Yes. And put them together, they're the same person. Do you think... Just one has a little more, you know, blue face, but outside of that... Two questions. Uh, one, do you think a spear of dragon glass could fell Mike Madigan? No. And number two, this is fantasy. Do you think I, I haven't yet? I don't completely live in the fantasy realm. Not completely. Not, well, not Illinois completely. is kind of a fantasy yeah, Well, financially yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and two, do you think White Walkers have their apples cut up for them by Madigan spokesman Steve Brown? Actually, when I had uh, that famous lunch with Mike Madigan, in which he offered me one of his apples mm. slices for a poisonous lunch. one i'm sure yeah uh i think he cut them up himself really and they were they were they were on you know six they were apples sliced into eight pieces two of them lined up on napkins so there were 16 pieces of he's a, apples. he's a fastidious Very little leprechaun fastidious, isn't, isn't he, he? Yeah. yeah he's almost dickensian in this regard um as a white walker though to get back to that uh, idea there is one thing, now, if you love the show, and I do, and Dan does, you know that White Walkers are susceptible to dragon glass. Yeah. You sta- or Valerian steel, right? Oh, that's right. Another, I forgot another. about the Valerian steel. However, yeah. there's one more thing that I think in Illinois mm-hmm. that he'd be susceptible to. Um, more Republican state legislators, so he doesn't have a super majority. That would be one. Defeating the Democrats in, uh, in the state house would be one. There's another, though. 219 South Dearborn. 219 South Dearborn is where the dragon glass is found. <laughs> yes. I think it's the seventh floor. Yeah. Wherever the grand jury meets, that's where it is. But you're talking about U.S. Attorney Zach Farden's office. Um, what... Oh, I'm sorry. Was I? I was just thinking about Sheldon Silver of New York, who is the, let's see, he was the general, he's the boss of the General Assembly, big Mr. Democrat, kind of like a Madigan, and had a tax reduction business. Kind of like Madigan. Uh, and you know what the attorney general did there? Or the U.S. attorney in that district? They put a case together. 
and send him to jail for 14 years. Yeah. Or 12 years, something 12 years. like that. Yeah, 12 years. Yeah, but he, So here's the thing. But there's no indication, just to no. be clear, that there's any federal investigation into Mike Madigan. Nor. No, no matter how worthy their one is. Nor is there any, investi- any uh, indication whatsoever that Michael Madigan would ever, and I mean ever, do anything um, that would be untoward or wrong or illegal in any way, shape, or form. And you know how I know that? How? When David Kidwell of the Chicago Tribune was investigating the fact that he he uh, somehow r- runs all these, uh, uh, does tax, sorry about that. Uh, I'm not does, here. Tell, tell, I'm does not here. tax reduction for many of, much of the downtown real estate interests. Yeah, the big the big uh, buildings. Run like by the, Re- the Willis Tower buildings. Run by Republicans, by the way. Yeah. Um, that's something they have to fix. Um, he, he, he put out a statement, uh, detailed about how he separates Madigan, his business from his politics. Oh, well then why are we even so, talking about him? I mean, because he's the white walker. T- why did somebody tell me that they're separated? So there's no more questions here. What about this? Uh, since he's so uh, transparent about where's the dragon is Dan Prof the dragon. No, 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 well, no. You're more like the, uh. Barbarian warlords. I'm more leather pants. I'm more like the queen of dragons. I'm Khaleesi. Really? Yeah. You did because you did that segment on your show about the diapers, men in diapers. And because how you're, no. you're moving this way. Because I'm a good looking gal. Yeah, you, uh, so here's the and thing. who are who are we to judge? That's exactly right. If you right. wish to say you are, that's right. You are, man. And I've got the barbarian hordes at my disposal, and we're marching. We just need to figure out how to get across Lake Michigan to the south side. Uh, Michigan Avenue. Southwest side. Right. But uh, so, uh, you know, since Mike Madigan has been so transparent, as you say, he explained that his professional interests have nothing to do uh, of being a property tax appeals attorney. Of course not. Have no. nothing to do with the fact that he writes property tax law and controls the Cook County Property Tax Appeals Board. They, the two have nothing to do with Not only other. that, that uh, doesn't have anything to do. He also elects the assessor of Cook County and others in other states, yeah. other other counties. And this one's name is uh, Joe Berrios, a very good politician, who's also the chairman of the Cook County Democratic Party. Uh, right. And, you know, I mean. I see clear lines how, of demarcation. How could anyone say this? I don't see anything problematic I, about that neither. setup. Uh, but So the question, though, is since he is so transparent, you, you would think that he would respond to calls, for example, to release his tax returns to see how well he's doing in this tough business climate in Illinois. Not only will should he release his tax returns, but we should re, he, we should re-release the great Chuck Gowdy uh, investigation of Mike Madigan, in which Chuck showed up on the Southwest Side to interview him about something that he didn't want to talk about, and Mike got so flustered that he left Shirley. He was driving the car, and Shirley's coming out. His wife in the car. His wife, and he ran away from Chuck. And Shirley's left on the parkway like, Mike, where are you? Why'd you go? Did he actually like drop and roll out of a moving car? He was, no, he was in scamper the, away? He was in the car and Shirley's, and Chuck out, he's running out there to, to, to enter, you know, yes. you know, doing a morally safer, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, we are going to ask you? Chasing he, him like seniors used to chase Rostenkowski. And he, yeah, <laughs> and he takes off that, it was like a Rostenkowski moment. And he takes off and Shirley's standing there in the, in the, in the, in the lawn of their, uh, you know, beautiful Southwest Side man's a bungalow. Is that what it is? It's just a, a bungalow with man. a moat. Yeah, middle a income family. Bungalow with a moat, of yeah. course. Yeah, and she's t- and he takes off, and she's standing there. Mike, <laughs> I'll never forget that one, man. <laughs> I love that one. Let me ask you a question. Uh, sticking on the Game of Thrones theme, yeah. um, there's rumors that House of Madigan has a castle, mm-hmm. well, a, a Winterfell type. Uh, a, right. a compound in Ireland. What about uh, what about doing a uh, sending David Kidwell or Chuck Gowdy over there to? How about Dan Proft and uh, I'll go and to John Ireland. I'll go to Ireland to look at look we'll around. Go out there and look at the they. So he's got this. I can I can just envision it now. The humble peasants um, pushing goading sheep, goading with goats. Yes. along the great great lawns, and uh, there are others building mud huts to live in. That he allows them to live in. The feudal lord and the serfs. Right, with mud, and they're making yeah. little huts, little walls of mud. Yeah. And there's this great hall filled with the heads of stags and so forth, right? Isn't that what we're talking about? I think uh, what we have here... I don't think we're talking about a split level in Kilkenny. 
I th- right? <laughs> no, I, I, I suspect not. Uh, but I think what we could have here is our very own John Snow, not John Cass, reassembling the families of the North to take out uh, Mike Lannister Madigan. What do you think about that? I think and that, do, you, do you think if anybody doesn't watch Game of Thrones, they understand what the hell we're talking about? They don't about. know what you're talking about, and we're not even going to get into the Oedipal, uh, I almost said Oedipal, the Oedipal uh, uh, assassination of uh, a certain father. Well, well speaking, son. Of, speaking of uh, family. We're getting way into the weeks. Yeah, but so speaking we of family. We come back to reality here. You said uh, the U.S. attorney, there's no reason to believe the U.S. attorney is investigating Mike Madigan, but now we have an attorney general. Um, yeah, the princess. If some of these matters were brought to her attention, maybe Lisa Madigan would See, investigate her father. What do you think? It's really nice, isn't it, that he's got not only Lisa Madigan as the attorney general, He's got his spendthrift uh, moron, Dick. What's his name? The, the attorney, the uh, the auditor general. Oh uh, yes, um, uh, Martino, right? Uh, Mr. Martino, right? Yes, Frank Martino, who yes. spent like what two hundred thousand dollars on uh, now, on pork chops from his own restaurant. Now he is under, money. He is under federal investigation. The yeah. auditor general responsible for overseeing the proper expenditure of state funds. He is under federal investigation. This is this is what I like about Illinois. You got the boss. You have the his da- boss's daughter is the chief law enforcement officer. You have the the guy, the moron that they put in who spends all the money on the, on pork chops from his own restaurant right. and gas for his car. I think it was like two hundred thousand dollars for gas. Yeah, nice. Does a lot of driving. I wonder why the feds are looking at you, baby. And all that in Illinois. And Mike Madigan is really not held to account, is he? By the news. I mean, I have to accept for the Chicago Tribune. And I give uh, the editorial board, Christian McQuery, and I shall take a little bit. And you, um, not really a lot. Mm. Is there? I guess guess it's Mm. another classic tale of getting the government we deserve.